last four seasons. Yeah, they're a hard team to figure. They really have been up and down the last four years, and including this season, and you can blame it on the five games on the road and the locker room distraction with Sam White being fined and such, but I think they're a unique team, and when they get out of sync, because they try to do so many different things, it's easy for them to get out of sync. They don't play particularly well, and I think that's what's happened to them a couple of games this season. But when they're in sync and in rhythm, they can play with anybody. And Sam Weich feels very confident that his team is going to be ready tonight. As a matter of fact, he thinks they have a chance of 8 to 12 home run plays tonight. Meanwhile, the Atlanta team, you talk to Jerry Glanville, you talk to his coaches, you talk to the players, and they all talk about a new attitude for this team. And so far, that's been true despite the bad record. But if you keep losing, that attitude thing will become a problem. Well, it will. And Jerry Glanville says, hey, they hired me to fix a flat tire here. And that is exactly what he did in Houston, what he's trying to do here. And he's trying to change the attitude and the perception around with this Atlanta team. Now, the real problems have been on defense for this Falcon team, really, which is a surprise because Jerry Glanville is a defensive coach. Points allowed, that is the only really de defensive st stat that counts. Uh, quarterbacks have had a field day against this secondary and, and that is really the problem he needs to get some pressure with his defense the bright spot has been the passing of Chris Miller to Andre Rice and he has really had a, a terrific year a young quarterback in his fourth year Chris Miller is and Andre Rice it leads the league in pass receptions and yardage he has eight touchdown receptions tied with Jerry Rice and again he came to this team a year uh, this past year for the Indianapolis Colts in a trade that sent Jeff George there, and he has made all the difference in this offense. A developing young quarterback in Chris Miller and a very, very explosive Andre Risen. Three catches over 70 yards for Andre Risen, and surprisingly, even a lot of those catches this year have come against double coverage. So we're going to look for a big game tonight from Andre Risen. Atlanta has won the toss, and they will receive, and Deion Sanders is the deep man for Atlanta. There are two coaches who don't think the world of one another, no doubt about that. A capacity crowd on its feet in Atlanta. Lee Johnson will kick it away. Sam White, a native of Atlanta, played his college ball at Furman. Jerry Glanville, out of Detroit, played collegiately at Northern Michigan. probably don't know too much about this young man but you like him don't you yeah i really do in his fourth year out of oregon and very very quietly here in atlanta probably because he's played on some bad teams here in his four years he is putting up some terrific numbers actually more yardage in his first four years than john elway and terry bradshaw throws very few interceptions only four on the year this so far miller brings it out steve broussard is the running back behind it and he gets the pick and he gets the 22-yard line. Now, the Falcons have two different types of offense. They have a regular conventional two-back set where you'll see Broussard and Keith Jones, and they'll try to plow out, grind out some first downs. And then they have their variation of the run and shoot, which they call the red gun. And that's where they've had most of their offensive explosion through the year through the red gun formation. Second and six for Atlanta. Wide to the right is Andre Risen. He has 43 catches, 710 yards already. Broussard pitched the other way. He got maybe one. Steve Broussard was the ball carrier. Kevin Walker made the stop, the third-year linebacker out of Maryland. And a third and five is the Carl result. Xander, number 91, makes the stop. Xander the was course. involved as well on the stop. Third and five. This is the situation on the third and five where they bring in their four wide receivers. They go into this red gun, which is much like the run and shoot, except the quarterbacks and the shotgun formations. The slot receivers and the four wide outset, they are the featured one. They run all the option routes. Rising to the left, Michael Haynes to the right. 
Floyd Dixon in motion for Atlanta. Possession play. Miller has a man complete. First down, 36 yard line. Chris Miller's pass. Sean Collins made the stop. He's out of Northern Arizona, second year man. 12 yard gain. First down, Atlanta. They move the chain. You know, one of the things the these uh, Falcons do such a nice job of, I think, the outside receivers in their run and shoot a red gun is clearing out zones. And they may not get a lot of balls thrown to them. They're unselfish outside receivers. Their job is to run people off, and then the other guys run underneath them into open areas, the, the vacant areas after First the clear out. To the 37. Tracy Johnson checks into the Atlanta backfield. Wide to the right is Michael Haynes. Dixon in motion. Complete. And out of bounds near midfield. Sean Collins, another reception. The stop was made by Chris Carl Carter. Complete to Sean Collins, number 84. 14 yard pickup. Okay, let's talk about the run and shoot it's a little bit. They call it their red gun, but the featured guys are these two slot guys. The outside guys you're going to see tonight are going to be clearing out of zones, but these guys will run all sorts of option routes from the slot, and that's where Andre Risen has caught most of his passes this year. They go back to the two setbacks, Broussard, first and ten for Atlanta, and Ball Keith Jones. Field. Andre Risen splits to the right. Michael Haynes to the left. First down, Atlanta. Broussard pops it for Steve about five. I think one of the surprising things about the Falcons, I think they're really the only James team Francis in the National Football League that can really the run these two, these both these teams, uh, both these type, types of offenses uh, effectively. I mean, mo most teams that run the run and shoot do that just exclusively because it takes so much practice time. Yet the Falcons are able to the run the ball with a little, a little bit uh, of effectiveness. On the Cincinnati 45-yard line. Second and five is the situation. Haynes comes wide right. Broussard, the single setback behind Miller. Risen starts in motion. Broussard, nothing there. He tried to make something out of nothing, could not. Steve Broussard, 34, the ball. Skip here. McClendon and Ricky Dixon in on the stop for Cincinnati, and it's third and four, and again, a possession play. The Falcons converted their one third down. For the Bengals. Opportunity in this game. Tracy Johnson checks back into the Atlanta lineup. Broussard goes out. And this Bengal defense has been pretty good this year against the run, where they have really been vulnerable is through the air. Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator, was saying this week that we've given up way too many big passes in the air uh, in the passing game, and particularly on third down, we'd have to play better pass defense. Third and four, they go to the red gun with Risen in motion. Miller gets pressure, unloads, complete first down to the 40-yard line. Andre Risen made the stop. The ball is recovered by Cincinnati, but down by contact will be the ruling. And let's see if he, where they mark it, he may not have the first stop. You know, one of the things you, you do with a man in motion, and you'll see on this play, Andre Risen was going in motion, is you find out whether it's man-for-man -man coverage. If a defensive back runs with a man in motion, generally it's man-for-man -man coverage. And that's what happened with the Cincinnati defense. They knew they had man-to-man. -man, so they just dumped it off right there to Risen. They called his forward momentum stopped. They called his forward momentum stopped, and that's why they did not allow the fumble. It is a first down. Atlanta might have gotten a break on that. Uh, I thought I thought his momentum was stopped. Well, you're a road scholar, so <laughs> I'd go with you. First down at the 40. A lot of street sense. Miller looks, looks. Uh, over the middle, complete to the 35-yard line. Keith Jones, the running back. Made the stop, an official bites the dust, so does Jones. Carl Zander, the linebacker out of Tennessee, made the stop. Keith Jones, number 38 right there, has been used primarily as a blocking back for the Falcons this season, but in tonight's game, they want to get a lot more out of Keith Jones. They want to use him as a runner and a receiver, not just a blocker tonight. A pickup of about four. The ball is at the 35-yard line. And Sam Weish was worried about some late hits that the, uh, for the Falcons, but that time actually the Bengals were a little bit late. Mike Rozier checks into the game. Rozier gets the ball and fights for the stick. He'll come up short. 
Mitchell Price made the stop out of the secondary along with linebacker James Francis, their number one draft choice out of Baylor. They love him, a 250-pound linebacker. So third and short for Atlanta. Now this is the previous play, Carl Carter, number 45 on Ryzen. It's just a little elbow into the ocean. They're going to be going after one another all night long. And I, you know, the coaches have been getting caught up in this acrimony between one another. And I think players do as well. Third down, two yards to go. Tracy Johnson, Mike Rozier are the setbacks. The deep man is Rozier. And he gets the ball. And he gets a first down and a lot more. Down to the 17-yard line. Solomon Wilcox made a touchdown saving tackle, but Atlanta is in business with a 14-yard Rosier run. And this was set up on the fullback block. Watch the fullback's block was just going to kick out on the outside linebacker. Tracy Johnson, they call him the tractor because of blocks like that on the defensive back Billups. And that was an easy first down run, too easy for Mike Rosier. Another angle at it, but really they had about a three or four yard gap outside the tackle for him to get the two yards because of the nice block by Tracy Johnson. Rozier cost him only $100. They claimed him from Houston. Twelfth play of the drive coming up. Floyd Dixon in motion. Out of the shotgun. Miller has time. Into the end zone. Broken up, intended for Ryzen. Pass intended for Ricky Dixon got a piece of it. And one thing you'll notice about both these quarterbacks, and they just saw it right there from Chris Miller, they use the pocket awfully well. You see Ricky Dixon, number 29, one of the nickelbacks, come in and make the play. But Chris Miller did a very nice job of buying himself a little bit more time of stepping up into the pocket. And he's oblivious to the rush. He's still looking downfield, although he's moving around in the pocket. Rozier checks back into the game for Atlanta. Second and 10 at the 17-yard line. Michael Haynes splits wide right. Sean Collins to the left. Ryzen slot left. Dixon in motion for Atlanta. The give, Rosie. 15. Close to the 10-yard line. Inside the 10. Maybe a loose football. No, he, he just keep moving. He, he just keeps running. He wasn't loose. He just kept those legs churning. You know, one of the reasons they picked him up for that $100 skip was because they, they wanted his physical presence as a running back. They, they want their running backs to have a, a linebacker's temperament. And Mike Rozier has that. He adds that to the team. We have a Cincinnati player shaken up on the play. David Fulcher, a good one, is hurting. We'll be back right after this. So far, Atlanta has controlled the ball for 8 minutes and 18 seconds. 12 plays, they are... In business, they're doing just what they wanted to do, keep Boomer Esiason and his mates off the field, as well as making some hay of their own. Yeah, and not only that, this is the perfect kind of drive for a first drive of your game. Your, your linemen get into it because they have to block to keep it going. Your wide receivers have caught a couple passes. Your, your quarterback is confident. You're controlling the clock. This is the perfect drive the first time you touch the ball. Rozier and Johnson are the setbacks. Miller, four out of five for 35 yards. David Fulcher walked off the field under his own power. And my guess would be he'll be back in this game. Ryzen comes wide right. Two tight ends in there for Atlanta. Gary Wilkins and Troy Sadowski. Third and two from the nine-yard line. And now play is halted. Miller can't hear signals or he's asking the crowd to be quiet. That's been unusual for Atlanta in recent years yeah. at home, believe me. Yeah. There haven't been many crowds. But they've been sunning them out with regularity this year. Third and two. The pitch, Rosier. He stopped short of the first down. Kevin Walker, the third-year man the stop and a fourth down is the result and Atlanta will settle for a try for three points yeah, what a nice play there by Kevin Walker the inside linebacker you know guys just read the inside linebackers just reads the offensive guard watching number 59 when he sees the guard pull he just follows the guard and the guard takes him right to the ball Greg Davis seven out of nine in field goal tries this year he's out of the Citadel this will be 27 yards 
Can't pull head, will hold. And Atlanta is on the board, a 27-yard field goal. Now Cincinnati will touch the ball for the first time, and we'll be back after this from your local sponsors. And Stanford Jennings and Mitchell Price, Greg Davis, will kick it off. There's Mike Rozier, who ran well in the first Atlanta drive, and there's the kick. It comes up short. And returning the ball for the Bengals is tight end Eric Kempis. And that was a really a nice drive by the Atlanta Falcons, even though they only got third, uh, three points. But this was the key run. It was third and four when Rozier it was third and one. And when Rozier got the nice block by his fullback and picked up the first down to keep the drive alive, he had another run on third and four. So the Bengals go to work for the first time. And James Brooks, the running back, splits out wide to the left. Boomer Esiason from the 28. And he'll put it up on first down. And completes it to the 35-yard line. Tim McGee made the reception. There's a look at Esiason's steps. Yeah, really uh, a surprising year for Boomer on the interception front. And it He's never really thrown a lot. He's always been a high uh, touchdown to interception ratio quarterback, but a lot of it uh, is he's had some tip balls, and he hasn't thrown the ball well at times. He's the first to admit. Second down and a long three for Atlanta. McGee splits left, Eddie Brown to the right. Brooks in the backfield this time around. He gets it away and complete. It was intended for Brown, but Scott Case was there to deflect it away. Well, Sam Weish said last night that his primary goal out of this game is to make sure that Boomer Esiason gets out of the game healthy. He doesn't really agree with the coaching tactics of Jerry Glanville. He says we've got to be able to protect Boomer, make sure he can follow through, but mostly he wants him not to be injured. Atlanta was able to get their nickel package into the game, and among those checking in, Audre Bruce, who is a, has turned into a pass rush specialist, though he has been a disappointment to the Falcon. Brooks the single setback, possession play. Lynn James in motion, Esaias and throws, and it's deflected, intercepted by Scott Case. Atlanta has the ball at the 30. Well, Skip, little things lead to big things. You never really know what's going to happen when you get your hands up. Again, it was Marcus Cotton, I think, number 51, who actually deflected it because Lynn James was going to be open for the first down, but the tip by Marcus Cotton and then the interception by Scott Case. Little things lead to the big things. Cotton had a big year for Atlanta last year, but has seen his playing time decline this. But he made a big play there. Let's see if Atlanta can punch it in. They start at the Cincinnati 33-yard line. Michael Haynes, wide right. Broussard back in the backfield as they go to the red gun. Chris Miller to throw. Has no time. The pass, he got it away. Broussard, great run, 25, 20. Pulls over one man and out at the 19. What a job by Miller to get rid of the football. Yeah, that is a terrific play by Chris Miller. And what he, what he did a nice job of is knowing exactly where his outlet receiver is. We talked about him stepping up into the pocket to buy some more time, but then he knows he's in trouble, knows right where his outlet guy is. And that's why he's avoided sacks this year. It's also why he's avoided interceptions. Another Bengal player has hit the deck here. As Broussard ran right over it. He'll be all right, and we'll be back right after this. TNT. Rod Jones was the man who Broussard ran over, but as you see, the fifth-year man out of SMU is on his feet on the sideline. So Atlanta goes to work. Rising wide right. Miller five out of six, 48 yards to this point. First and ten from the 20. Broussard again, 15. 
We're starting to ball carry for Atlanta. Tim Kramerheim had the stop, and now trouble breaks up. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of these scuffles tonight. A lot has been said about the rivalry and the acrimony between the coaches. The, the players talked about it this week. They're very well aware of it. And that will be the last one you see tonight. Our referee is Dale Hamer, and he's going to have his hands full in this one. A gain of five for Broussard, who's running well. Tracy Johnson checks in for Atlanta. You know, spe speaking of referees, it's interesting. Sam Weish actually has a scouting report for referees that he and Boomer go over every night before on Saturday nights. They know all the referees and umpires' names, their wives' names, where they live. Just some incidental chatter for the game. Michael Haynes wide left for Atlanta on second down. The give Rosier. Mike Rozier's style is perfect for a Jerry Glanville team. I mean, you know, it, it, like if Darth Vader were a football player, he'd play for Jerry Glanville. Mike Rozier adds that kind of attitude that they want from all out of their other of the running backs. And right now, Atlanta's knocking Cincinnati right off the ball. Only 2.43 left in the first quarter. And Cincinnati has possessed the ball for just three plays. Atlanta has six first downs. First to go from the eighth. The pitch. Rose penalty flags as he reaches the four. And yet another flag comes flying in late against Cincinnati. And Lewis Phillips is arguing about that one. So it'll take a while to get this sorted out. There's holding against Atlanta, but I think a penalty against the Bengals as well. So while the officials discuss that, we may have offsetting penalty. Here's Dale. We have two fouls on the play. Holding number 79 of the offense. Unnecessary roughness, number 45 of the defense. A penalty offset, first down. Carl Carter was the man called for Cincinnati, so the first and goal will come all over again. You know, Carl Carter was the one who gave Andre Ryzen that little shot earlier in the game as well, and that time somebody caught him. So it'll be first and goal from the eight-yard line. Take a quick look. Number 45 is Carter. Yep. Yeah, right there at the end of the screen hit Michael Haynes, number 81. That's twice Carter's done that and been caught once. So it's first and goal all over again for Atlanta. Play action, Miller has a man all along. Johnson bowls his way. Just short of the goal line. Kevin Walker made the stop. Well, you know, so much has been made of Cincinnati and the way they play action uh, fake and how good they do it. But this is an awfully nice fake by Chris Miller. Again, it completely fools James Francis, the outside linebacker who's a rookie, the number one draft pick for them. And then Tracy Johnson just had an easy catch and brings it down to the one-yard line, but it was set up by a very good fake by Chris Miller. It's only inches from the goal line, as you see. Second down, goal to go. He's not in there. So a third down will result. You can see Miller really upset. He thought he had crossed the plane. So it's third and into it. I'll tell you what, all these guys, they're all pitching in here. It's a tough defense. To run that quarterback sneak against they just bowl the center jamie dukes back into the quarterback and that's why they said he didn't score third and less than a foot
lead 9-0 as Greg Davis will try to put another point on the board. It's 10-0, 33 yards, six plays after the case interception. It took three minutes and 19 seconds. 10-0 Atlanta back after this from your local sponsors. Mike Rozier, the man of the moment at Atlanta. The Falcons lead 10-0. Stanford Jennings, Mitchell Price are the deep men. As Greg Davis gets ready to kick it off. Atlanta so far has run 20 plays in this game. Cincinnati just three. man made the stop. There were two blocks that were key to the touchdown. This is Wilkins, the tight end. Watch how he seals it here. And then the fullback, Jones, kicks out here. The Falcon fullbacks tonight have been sensational on their blocks, just kicking out linebackers and defensive backs. The tailbacks have just run right inside them for big games. Craig Taylor checks into the Cincinnati backfield along with James Brooks. From the 25, running play. His way out to the 30 yard line. And a lot of hats on that football for Atlanta, as is normally the case. You know, Jerry Glanville said yesterday that for us to win this game, we have to create events on defense fumbles, sacks, block kicks, or punts. They've come up with a one turnover tonight, the interception after the, the block by Marcus Cotton that got them in the end zone. And that's what he wants events. There's a the time of possession. It's been all Atlanta to this point. 15 seconds remaining in the quarter. The Falcons led the Rams 10-0 last week and let it slip away. Second and five. Esiason will throw. Goes long for McGee. Over through. Deion Sanders in the coverage. And the quarter has come to a close. We've played one quarter in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Atlanta 10, Cincinnati nothing. You see the situation, it's third and five for Cincinnati. The ball is at the Bengal 30 yard line. They trail 10 nothing. And the story really has been, I think, the, the a real physical game played by the Falcons thus far. Offensive linemen have controlled the game and the and Falcon defense has been terrific, creating one turnover already. Third and five, Esiason changes the play. He'll throw for it. Complete first down. Eddie Brown made the reception. He's a fine receiver, is Brown, out of Miami. That's his 21st catch of the year. Now for 384 yards. Yeah, there you'll see, right now, you'll see one of the five different huddles the Bengals have. They have an attack huddle, and then they have a, a sugar huddle, and all kinds of different huddles, and they're trying to accomplish different things with each, with each of their huddles. There they are, the no huddle huddle, the full huddle, sideline huddle, which they just had. Bengals first first down of the night. Brooks splits wide to the right, and again, Esiason rolls up, looks, and throws, incomplete. Charles Dimery on the snap, but was intended for Brooks. Demery, a much maligned cornerback here, but it really not all his fault. They really put a lot of pressure on their corners. Don't they? Uh, they sure do. With all the blitzing the Falcons do, they put those guys in an untenable position. But Weiss was so concerned. What's the block by number 75? That's Grimers. So concerned about the rush of the Falcons, he had what he put called a dash. That's a dash play where they drop Boomer size and back a couple of steps, and then he rolls out from one side away from the rush. They're hoping to buy him some more time and to stay away from a late hit. Second and 10 from the 42 yard line. McGee wide right, Brown in the slot to that side. Again, as Esiason changes the play. And it's a running play and Taylor gets absolutely nothing. Torrey Epps 
Hicks and Jesse Tuggle there on the stop. That is a nice play by Jesse Tuggle. And here's a guy on the inside, number 58, that they, that they ask an awful lot of. Plays right in the middle on the 34, and he'll play in the nickel defense. And at first it was Epps, number 74, the, the nose tackle, filling in for Tony Casillas. And then he got some help from Jesse Tuggle. But you'll notice with the Falcons, it's never just one guy making the stop. It's at least two or three guys. Tuggle out of Valdosta State in South Georgia. Third and 11. Possession play for the Bengals. Brown in motion. Complete to Brown. Cross midfield. He loses one man and lunges forward to the 44-yard line. Jesse Tuggle in on the stop again, but 14 yards and a first down. You know, it, that's a terrific call because you have your most dangerous threat as a receiver after the catch running away from the defense in a crossing route. Bottom of your screen in motion, but he's coming all the way across. You see Dimery number 22, and man for man gets bumped off, and then Tuggle tries to pick him up. The thing about Eddie Brown is he, he can make everybody miss, not just one guy. And that's what makes him dangerous after the catch. McGee comes wide right against Dimery. It's a running play, and it's Taylor, and there's nothing there. Falcons tough against the run. Jesse Tuggle involved once again. Also, Darian Connor was in there, the young rookie linebacker out of Jackson State. Well, you're right. They have been awfully tough against the run is because they get three, four, five black jerseys around the ball. They call uh, Jerry Glanville says, I want 11 players to touch the ball carrier every play. Tough against the run, but they've given up over 300 yards throwing. If you're going to beat them, you beat them through the air. Here comes Esiason. Eddie Brown, wide right. Brooks is back in the backfield. The canvas to Taylor. He breaks it. Shakes off one tackler. Is wrestled down at the 38-yard line by Brian Jordan, who spends his summer as a baseball player in the St. Louis Cardinals organization. You know, Greg More Taylor. hostilities, yeah. excuse me, Pat, breaking up. And there's uh, Boomer. Remember last week on Monday night, Boomer and McElwee, Bob McElwee, the referee, got into it, and that time it's Boomer and Dale Hammer. It's interesting, Boomer was saying last night that he really likes Dale Hammer, thinks he's a very fair referee, and as we were saying, the Cincinnati Bengals spend a lot of time on Saturday night just talking about the officiating crew, what they like to call, what all their names are. All 47 Bengal players usually go out and say hello to the referee before the game. Third down, three yards to go. Brooks tripped up. He is short of the first down. Well, you know, offense is about rhythm. And it's very difficult to get into rhythm against this Falcon defense because they have so many bodies up at the line of scrimmage. They blitz on rundowns. They blitz on pass downs. I mean, Joe Montan had a field day a couple of a weeks ago by throwing the ball against one-on-one -on -one coverage and blitzes but they're very difficult to run against. Lee Johnson will kick it away to Deion Sanders, who stands back at his 10-yard line. 10-25 left in the first half. It's been all Atlanta to this point. <laughs> Too much time. Flag spot. No, that's not a... Okay. 11 in the offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. See, what Lee Johnson doesn't want to do here is punt this ball into the end zone. I mean, you get 20 yards to work with to get it out of bounds, at least force Atlanta to go 85, 90 yards. So Johnson will kick it away. Sanders hopes to get a return. He can fly if he gets a seam. And Atlanta has blocked three punts this year. punter likes to put pressure on you number 36 
It's right there at the front. The direct snap to him. He's the blocker. Then they have a little kick out there by Barker, number 53. And Stanford Jennings does a nice job of picking up the first down. Roland Mitchell saved the touchdown. He made the tackle. A big gamble by the Bengals. And they have a first down at the 30-yard line. Looked to be a fumble at the end of that play, though. curriculars there the which is unfortunate I think there's a face mask penalty right, well, Halloween just three days away those are the perfect uniforms aren't they for Halloween <laughs> and a happy Halloween to you let me be the first yeah yeah what are you going as the good year blimp <laughs> Boomer was Boomer Sison was saying that he respects Dale Hammer because Hamer because he doesn't lose control of the game. He's going to have his hands full tonight. No two ways about it. Second and eight for the Bengals. Straight ahead. Game of about three down to the 25-yard line. Tuggle involved in the tackle again, along with John Rady, the eight-year man out of Boise State. Craig Taylor was the ball carrier. You know, two plays here. We thought maybe there was a fumble here at the end by Stanford Jennings. The ball is definitely on the ground after the play. The issue was, was he down? Was he down by contact? He was down, yeah. it appeared, when it yeah, came down up. down by contact, absolutely. Third and five from the 25. Taylor, the long setback behind Esiason. McGee made the reception. Nine-yard pickup and a first down. Now, one of the things you see about these Bengal receivers, there's a lot of subtleties. You see the number 74 on his helmet. That's for Brian Blados, the guard who was injured. But a lot of subtleties in this passing attack for the Bengals. And one of the things I'm always impressed with, their receivers on third down always seem to go the right distance to be able to get the, the first down. How many times do you see a receiver run six yards on third and eight, but not Bengal receivers? Eddie Brown wide to the right. The running play, it's Taylor, nothing back. He got maybe a yard. Rady was there. Scott Case was there on the stop. Brian Jordan as well. Well, if, if Scott Case, the free safety, is making the play, and Brian Jordan, the strong safety, number 40, that means somebody's got to be open behind him on play action. Here they go with the hurry up, and they got Taylor all alone. He dropped the football. Let's see what they call it. <laughs> they caught Atlanta with the play, but he simply dropped the football. Well, they caught us as well. It's it, These guys can attack you in a lot of different ways. If you aren't lined up correctly, they'll snap the ball immediately. And remember, defensive football is about adjustments. Being able to change the flow. And what they try to do is take your adjustments away from you by snapping the ball quickly. Third and ten. Craig Taylor still the lone setback. He's going to run it. Now he's going to throw it. It's complete to the tight end. Down to about the seven-yard line. It was Jim Riggs. That's, that's a neat play, and I think that's a design play where Boomer Siasen fakes like he's going to take off and run with the football. He knows exactly where the marker is, and then he stops. You know, you, you'll see him. He's going to fake like he's going to run with the football, but he knows right where the marker is. He stops, and when the defensive man comes up, he just dumps it off to Riggs. Again, one of those subtle little plays which makes this team, Cincinnati, so unusual. Now, wait a minute. Actually, Ken Moyer was across the line of scrimmage, number 73. It's short of the first down, but by an inch. Mickey Woods has checked into the game for Cincinnati. And then he went back out. You know, Ken Moyer was actually, I think, past the line of scrimmage 
on that play when Boomer threw it right there. You see, line of scrimmage is right there at about the, uh, what, the 18, 73, Boyer is past it when Esiason throws it. Got away with it. Time is called by the official. Atlanta called timeout. That's uh, confusion for the Atlanta team, and they want to regroup. They call timeout. Fourth and inches. We'll be back right after this. Fourth down and inches. This will be the 17th play of the Cincinnati drive. So now plays run from scrimmage are even at 20. Atlanta had led in that department. 20 plays to three. Well, you know, interesting call here for Sam Weish because they have not run the ball well against this Falcon defense. And they come out with four wide receivers. Quarterback sneak, Esiason. And I'm uh, certain that he made it. Another first down. Yeah, another interesting call because they spread guys out, and then on a quick count they go up and run the quarterback sneak. Well, Sias, anyway, you got to remember 6'5", 220, He's a load out there. He's yeah, big guy. Yeah, all he needs to get is a little bit of momentum, a little, little move, push out of his center and right guard, and, and and you pick up the first down. First and goal from the six yard line. Brooks and Icky Woods are the running back. Did he get in? Yes. And that, that was a terrific screen block by Icky Woods, number 30. So he screened out two guys there for James Brooks. The fans are deprived of seeing the Icky shuffle, yeah. but they'll get over it. But watch Icky block here, number 30. It's a, a, a little counterplay here to James Brooks something they ran last Monday night for a 28-yard touchdown, but he, he really screens three guys there and allows James Brooks to cut right underneath him for the touchdown. But, you know, he didn't throw his body out, but he just cleared the way by screening for Brooks. Now they're going to review this play to see if he got into the end zone. He did. If the play stands, it is a touchdown. And Jim Breach will try the extra point. He is perfect for the year, 21 of 21. 10-6 is our score. 75-yard drive, 18 plays. It took 10 minutes off the clock. It was kept alive by that fake punt. That's true, and it's a 10-7 ball game. Atlanta has the lead, and they'll have the ball when we come back. Deion Sanders, the deep man for Atlanta. Lee Johnson will kick it off. 10-7. Atlanta leads, 5.58 left, first half. Fine kick. Sanders downs it in the end zone, and Atlanta will start from the 20-yard line. We'll be back right after this. It comes from your local sponsors. Now. Coming up at halftime, it's the Nissan Halftime Report. Ernie Johnson Jr. and Ken Stabler bring you highlights from today's NFL action. Also, another Paul Wrighton original. All that coming up at halftime. First down, Atlanta from the 20. This is the first time they've touched the ball in this quarter. Yeah, really, uh, Cincinnati really owned the second quarter thus far, and, and the Falcons really owned the first quarter. They had nine minutes of it possession in the first quarter, and Cincinnati in the second. Special hello to... Bill Simon looking in up in Washington. Our producer, Ned Simon's dad. Glad to have him with us. Steve Broussard checks into the Atlanta backfield. They go to the red gun from the 20. That's complete, and it's Michael Haynes, and he's got the 37-yard line. Well, the two plays that really set up the touchdown for Cincinnati on their last drive were well, this one on fourth down. It was the fake punt to stand for Jennings. It was fourth and eight. When they called this play, it was executed beautifully. 
And that led to the touchdown right here after the block by Icky Woods. And James Brooks, who has one of those players who just has a real feel for the game, he just sent through a little crease in between three bodies and got the ball all into the corner of the end zone. Chris Miller now seven out of eight, 73 yards. They go to the red gun again. Why not? The way it's working. Andre Risen in motion. chased him out but a first down for Atlanta that, that looked like it was supposed to be a shovel pass and I think Chris Middle was actually going to dump this ball right here to Broussard but he's but he saw number 96 right there to attack Aloha and then decided just to run for the first down it was a nice heads up play by Chris Miller so Atlanta two first downs in as many plays five minutes remaining in the half they mark it at the 48-yard line. Haynes wide right, rise into the left. This time the give is to Broussard. He eludes one tackle, crosses midfield before he is stopped by Skip McClendon. Well, you know, the, the defense we have seen by both teams tonight would make the Denver Nuggets proud. <laughs> I saw them <laughs> here Friday night. They scored 200? Oh, uh, with 160, 152 was the final. They scored 152 and lost. <laughs> Love layups, huh? Well, that's what's well, been happening to these teams. I mean, they've been scoring lots of points, particularly the Falcons. They, they rank third in the NFL in points scored, but they've been, they've been terrible in the pass defense category. Sean Collins wide left. Rozier checks into the backfield with Chris Miller. Andre Risen goes in motion. Collins complete. Tries to keep his feet out of bounds short of the 40. Ricky Dixon ran him up. Sean Collins is getting more and more involved in this Falcon attack. He had a big year a year ago as a rookie, but early this season was the forgotten man because Andre Risen was the man who was getting all the attention. But now that Rice is getting more and more double coverage, it's guys like Sean Collins and Michael Haynes who've been more the attack, particularly tonight. Rozier out of the game. Broussard checks back in. The tight end Gary Wilkins is in the game, as well as is Troy Sadowski. Uh, yet another Atlanta tight end. Rison wide to the right on third and one. It's the pitch again. James Francis ran him out, but Atlanta's drive continues. A gain of seven. You know, every short yardage play, the Falcons have run the exact same play, and every play, the fullback has cleared out for the tailback. Again, the fullback, Tracy Johnson, just kicked out, and Broussard, who seems like a kind of a short John Riggins type, just real powerful, he's got big legs. You know, even though he is he is short, 5'7", he's not small, 201 pounds, you know, run through a lot of arm tackles. But he's been getting some sensational blocking tonight by their fullback. Rozier checks back in for Atlanta. Ryzen in motion. Miller fumbles, has to dive on it. A loss back to the 42-yard line. That's the one thing that shotgun can have before you from time to time. Well, this, this is, has been a problem for the uh, for the Falcons is exchanges between quarterback and center. I'm not sure that was maybe supposed to be a direct snap to to uh, Rozier. I mean, it looked like it was coming right to Rozier, and Chris Miller just got his hand on him. Second and 17 is the result. Sean Collins wide right. Michael Haynes splits the other way. Floyd Dixon comes in motion. Miller to throw. So a third down and 17 will be the result. <laughs> he's, Miller's helmet's falling yeah, apart. On. He's been hit a few times. He got the old ear pad uh, folded under. That's what happens when you get hit a couple of times by linebackers. That ear pad just comes undone. 
Third and 17 is the result. Now, th this has been a situation where Andre Risen has been the featured guy up until tonight. But he's attracting an awful lot of attention. A lot of five out of six in third down situation. Got a tough one here. Miller has a lot of time over through Sean Collins. Rod Jones back in the game on the coverage, but Miller simply missed him. And Andre Risen is really hot. So fourth down and 17 from the 42 will be the situation here as we reach the two-minute warning. Two minutes left in the first half. The Falcons lead 10-7. They're about to give up the ball, and we'll be back. Good idea. Scott Fulheg will punt for Atlanta. Mitchell Price, the deep man for Cincinnati. 10-7 is our score. Atlanta has the lead. Mr. Price has broken one for 66 yards and a touchdown this year. A beautiful kick. the fair catch at about the 13-yard line. And that's where Cincinnati will go to work when we come back. 152, as you see, the time remaining in the first half. The Bengals have the ball. They trail by three points. You know, last night, Sam Weish was saying he thought that they had a chance for 12 big plays, home run plays tonight. But really, this Falcon defense has taken that away. They really haven't been able to have the kind of night throwing the ball downfield that he anticipated. Eddie Brown splits wide to the right against Charles Dimery. The running play to Brooks. He slips and falls and gets only to the 15-yard line. Ryan Jordan is having a big game, was in on the snap. Again, with 1-4-39 remaining in the half, Cincinnati is all three of their timeouts. And when they've had some success, they've, they've hit Eddie Brown or Tim McGee on the move, running away from defenders. And they have the ability to make everybody on the field miss, not just the first guy. They seem they're in no hurry here, down by three, late in the half. Deep in their own territory. Because I, you know, they just did. I, I'm very surprised they continue to run the football. Timeout, Atlanta. It's, a, it's like Sam is saying he wants to get into the locker room at halftime with the score right where it is. That's the Atlanta, second timeout called by Atlanta. They have but one remaining. Say Tuesday night, don't miss the NBA Hall of Fame game when the Houston Rockets take on the two-time world champion Detroit Pistons. Live on TNT, Pete Van Weeren will be there, along with Rick Barry. 8 o'clock, Tuesday night, NBA action, right here on TNT. Really, very much surprised Cincinnati ran those two downs, because they have really just been stuffed running the football all night. And now they find themselves with a third and nine from the 15-yard line. With a minute three remaining in our first half. If the Falcons can force a punt, they get good field position, and they have one timeout remaining. Whoops. Flags fly. Were they drawn off? Nope. Encroachment, number 99 of the defense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. The five-year man out of Syracuse, Tim Green, made contact. You know, I, I think they do so much shifting and moving around. Yeah. There's no doubt they have three guys. But I mean, they do so much shifting and moving around, and you're so worried about getting lined up right. Just a slight, slightest change in a cadence can draw you offside. That's the first Atlanta penalty of the night. This is normally an off-penalized team. when you have a lot of guys around the ball carrier. 
and it's another one of those events. It was caused by number 40, Brian Jordan. One of those events that Jerry Glanville was ca uh, talking about. The only way we could beat these Bengals, he said, causing turnovers, blocking punts, creating interceptions, and they've done it tonight. Another big play for Scott Case. Brian Jordan, number 40, the strong safety, was the first guy there who put the heat a uh, hit on him. And then Scott Case just kind of slapping it forward. Finally got a good hop. And they say they ruled him down right there. Atlanta called their final timeout. There are 54 seconds left in the first half. Into the game comes Tracy Johnson, the second year man out of Clemson and running back. And as we said earlier, I, I think one of the amazing things about this Falcon offense, they have been very good inside the 20 yard line this year by putting the ball into the end zone. They don't settle for many field goals down here. And for a run and shoot team, which you think may be a finesse team, it's a bit surprising they're able to get as many touchdowns inside the 20 as they have. Remember, they are out of timeouts, are the Falcons. So Sam White's decision to play conservative really backfired on. Yeah. Well, now his defense has to come up with a play, though. They, like the Falcon defense, his defense needs to create an event. First and goal from the three. And made that catch, but Andre Risen was open as well. Chris Miller had two receivers open for the score. What a turnaround here in the closing minute of the first half. Greg Davis will try to tack on the extra point. And he does. And the score is 17 7. Here's a look at the touchdown. Yeah, again, you see, when, when Rising goes in motion, the man runs with him, so now Chris Miller immediately knows he has man-for-man -man coverage. It's not going to be a zone. And then Floyd Dixon just runs away from the man coverage. It was David Fulcher trying to cover him. But the man in motion gave Chris Miller a pre-snap read, and he found Dixon in the end zone. Two turnovers by... Cincinnati and they have caused the two touchdowns for Atlanta. You saw rise in emotion there and with a guy running with him it just, It's just another way of giving a quarterback an advantage before the ball is snapped What's the defense going to do when we send a guy in a motion? Is it zone or man? And he got that pre-snap look So things are moving along swimmingly for Atlanta. There's the snap we just gave you well, we said at the very beginning of the show, this has been an up-and-down team this year, really for the last four years. they played brilliantly at times, I'm talking about the Bengals, and miserably at times, and tonight has been one of those miserable evenings thus far. Price and Jennings are the deep men. Greg Davis will kick it off for Atlanta. Seventeen seven Falcons are scored. for Jennings deep in the end zone won't bring it up so they'll start at the 20 yard line look all, all 10 all 11 guys in the kickoff team go down and touch the ball carrier all 11 guys were down there even though it was down in the end zone you see that Sam Weiss last night was saying hey I'm worried about the emotional tenor of my team physically we're healthy but we've been traveling there's a lot of distractions have been going on I'm just worried about the mental makeup, mental preparation. He said we had the worst practice Friday that we've had all season. So this is their eighth game. They've only played one one o'clock Sunday yeah. game in eight. The give to the running back. It is Craig Taylor. And yet another fumble. Now they're calling it down. They're going to rule it down by contact. Scott Case has the ball again, but this one won't come. If Case is making that many plays tonight up at the line of scrimmage, and he has, 
You think they tried the play action fake and try to get behind him. But those safeties of the Falcons, Scott Case and Brian Jordan a week ago had 44 tackles between them. And again tonight, they've been a factor. It was Case who made the hit. Down by contact, no fumble. There's the guy, he causes a lot of receivers to hear a cat yawn at 50 yards. You, uh, you know where Scott Casey is when you're running over the middle. Indeed. 36 seconds remaining in our half. Fred Hickman in the game at half that. I can't believe you guys let one team do it because they do it every step. It's a 10-point game. 17-7 Atlanta. The crowd here loves it. Coming up, the Nissan Halftime Report. But first, this from your sponsor. The Nissan Halftime Report is being brought to you by Nissan. Built for the human race. They have played 30 minutes in downtown Atlanta, the homestanding Falcons leading the Cincinnati Bengals 17-7. And this is the Nissan Halftime Report. I'm Ernie Johnson. This is Ken Stabler. First half, uh, Scott Case, you know, he flicks the ball around to recover. It almost reminds me of you in your heyday with a little fumble action. Well, he batted he as I rolled mine, but basically <laughs> the, the same result. Good defensive effort. Uh, they control the ball on offense, and then when Cincinnati did have the ball, Scott Case and the defense forced the turnovers, and then there you have the first half. 17-7, to 7, the Falcons with the lead over the Cincinnati Bengals. This is Sunday number 8 of the NFL season. Let's start our recap with the New York Giants playing host to the Washington Redskins. Stan Humphreys has found the Giants quite tough. Tough day for Stan Humphreys through three interceptions today. That's six on a year against the Giants. Here he's picked off by Everton Walls. Walls returns it 28 yards for the touchdown. And the Giants with a 21-10 win over the Redskins, their second victory in the last three weeks over the Skins. The Bears are now 6-1, beat Phoenix 31-21. The San Francisco 49ers are 7-0, but they needed a late Mike Kofer field goal to beat the Browns. Under 10 seconds to go, game tied 17-all, and it's Kofer from 45 yards away who gets it inside that upright 20-17. The Niners remain perfect at home with the win over the Browns. Also, the Detroit Lions taking advantage of eight Saints turnovers beat New Orleans 27 to 10. The Eagles and Dallas Cowboys, Randall Cunningham does it late. Yeah, Cunningham with less than a minute to play with a ball on a nine yard line, throws it back in the corner. Nice adjustment by Calvin Williams for a nine yard score. He burns Robert Williams 21 to 20 the final. The Eagles winners over Dallas. The Minnesota Vikings Boy, they are 1-6, lost to the Packers, 24-10. The Dolphins and the Indianapolis Colts, Dan Marino, a steady day. Dan Marino, third and three, is going to find Jim Jensen on a five-yard touchdown pass, 21 for 29 for 161 and a touchdown for Marino. And a 27-7 victory. Eric Dickerson, by the way, held the 27 yards for the Colts in that one, and it was the Bills over the Patriots, 27-10. The New York Jets and Houston Oilers. Warren Moon threw for 381, but this was the big play. Out of his own end zone, trying to make it happen. Daryl Davis hits him, forces the fumble. Daryl Davis recovers it for the go-ahead score for the Jets. It was 14 to 12 at that point. It winds up 17 to 12. The Jets beat the Oilers at the Astrodome, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers really took it on the chin at Jack Murphy Stadium. That one goes to San Diego, 41 to 10. And as the Nissan halftime report continues, it's time for another Ryden original tonight. Paul with a story of a New England town where football is a way of life. Pat Hayden, Skip Carey back with you at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. There's your score. The Falcons have the lead. They have led throughout. Really two different quarters in the first, uh, first quarter. The Falcons really dominated time of possessions you saw there. And in the second quarter, the Bengals came back with time of possession. They scored their only touchdown when the fake punt kept, up, kept it alive. But then at, right at the, uh, before the second half ended, Brooks fumbled. 
and two turnovers have led to 14 points for the Falcons here tonight. There are the turnovers. That has been the story thus far, and I think really the other story has been how well this, this Falcon defense has played. I mean, they, they've stuffed the run, really, and Sam Weiss thought that he could get the ball up top, but he's not been able to do that either. You know, another item for Atlanta, one penalty for five yards. This is a team that has been penalized a lot. You know, they lead, the yeah, on average, they lead the league in penalties. But not tonight. Stanford Jennings, Mitchell Price are the deep men. Greg Davis will kick it off. And the Bengals will go to work first here in the second half. Now, I think this is a very important offensive series for the Bengals. They have, they really have been quite lethargic on offense, I think. And I think this is a, an important series. You go in at halftime, you make some adjustments, and then you come out, you have the ball, you have to do something with it. 10. Well, you know, Boomer last Monday night threw for what, 85 yards, I guess. The first half has not been his kind of uh, half either. But he's, but again, he's been an enigma. And against the Rams, he threw for 490 yards, so he can have those kinds of games and those kinds of halves for you. From the 26-yard line, the Bengals go to work. Icky Woods with the reception. Well, what a difference Icky Woods would make to this team if he can come back and play the rest of this season. Because remember, two years ago, their Super Bowl year, he rushed for over a thousand yards, and you know he had a major knee surgery after the second game last year. And I don't think you ever come back from knee surgery until you go through a few pileups like he just did. You go through a few of those, and then you know you're back. Harold Green joins him in the backfield. Woods across the 35, close to a first down. Woods played for the first time last Monday night, and when he came into the game, Esiason said to him, don't let the first guy bring you down. Don't let the first hit bring you down. He didn't. And to Boomer, that was the sign that Icky Woods is back. They move the chains. First and ten is the result. Those are Halloween costumes, aren't they? A colorful group. <laughs> for 11 years. Number 78, top of the screen, has a hold of Tim Green. Yeah, just gets that right hand out there. Gives him the old Heimlich maneuver. We always call that, yeah. I'm afraid I was going to have to give you that at dinner last night. <laughs> That's a other start. Yeah, you're always taking those nice joints. They have the portraits of the Heimlich maneuver on the walls, yeah. First down, 20 yards to go from the 27 yard line. black jerseys there maybe six seven black jerseys around the ball carrier and what we haven't seen tonight is the play action passes of Cincinnati that have really I think been incredibly effective for them over the years Scott Case is having a heck of a game making yeah. tackles up at the line of scrimmage yeah, if that tells you something he's the free safety if he's there somebody ought to be able to get behind him second and 17 from the 31 yard line 12 and a half minutes left in our third quarter Once again, the man in the middle, Brian Jordan, 
broken up. Third and long. Uh, Brian Jordan is one of those old style strong safeties. Number 40 right there. Now, those old style guys who can, you see number 40 right there in uh, the right side of the screen. He reads things, he hangs in it, he plays close to the line of scrimmage. He's a physical player, not like Alvin Walton of the, the Redskins. Trips right for Cincinnati. Eddie Brown, the widest man. Third and 17. Long count, Desaias. No. Boy. That ball was well thrown. Tim McGee couldn't hang on. Yeah, that ball was, was well thrown. And McGee against Deion Sanders early. And then the release him inside on his own. That ball, that ball should have been caught. It really should, be, should, should have been caught for the first down. Lee Johnson will punt it away to Deion Sanders. There he is. First Amendment with hips, Deion Sanders. <laughs> this will be the first punt of the night for Johnson. He faked one earlier. Sanders waits at the 34-yard line. Drives him back to the 21. He can fly. Goodbye. Yep, that's why they call him the First Amendment with hips. <laughs> 79 yards. Well, you know, all you have to do to give a guy like Sanders who's got marvelous athletic skills is just a couple of blocks because he can do a lot by himself. He can, he's going to outrun maybe three or four guys. So if he can just block the first two or three, you have a chance. He has got some talent. And the score mounts to 24-7 as Greg Davis hammers it home. Atlanta winning big. We'll be back after this. It comes from your local sponsor. <laughs> Longest punt return in Falcon history. 79 yards. Previous record 77 by Tom McCauley back in 1970. Price will dial it in the end zone. We'll take another look at the punt return by Deion Sanders and Skip, and he really, he just picked up one block by Roland Mitchell, number 39, and then really the rest was on his own. When he gets to the open field, forget about it, boy, he can really run. Well, Cincinnati now, yeah, they're, they're hurting. Yeah, they are hurting. But last week, what they did, we were able to run the ball. And that's how they beat the Cleveland Browns. They haven't been able to run it tonight. Carroll Green gets the ball, breaks the tackle, fights his way up to the 30 yard line. Brian Jordan again involved on the stop for Atlanta. Boy, he's having some game. 11 yard pickup and a first down. The clock runs with 11 20 left. Harold Green is a, is a guy who had a big night last Monday night. And he's got a wonderful, he's a rookie, number two draft pick, a wonderful change of direction that you saw right there. He played his college ball right up the road in South Carolina. This is their little sugar huddle, as they call it. They haven't really done much of that tonight. But they really haven't had too many quick counts. I think the, uh, the Falcons really haven't tried to substitute a lot. He's up close to the 35, John Rady in on the stop. You know, the, Robert Lyles was there as well. You know, in an era of specialization and situation substitution, what this no huddle or a quick huddle they do, they, they prevent you from doing that. You know, now, see the Falcons tried to come out and substitute there. Flags fly, pass complete, green driven back, again by Jesse Tuckle. But there 
puts a flag on the play. As soon as Esiason saw the Falcons try to substitute, Many men on the field on the defense. Yeah. Five yard penalty. That's that's why you can't, you know, again, you Scott Case told us is, he said we can't really substitute against these guys. We're not gonna try much. And what this no huddle does is puts a lot of guys on the field in third down situations that aren't comfortable playing in that situation and haven't done all year long. Falcons make more changes, but this time the Bengals are content to huddle it up. 10-14 remaining in the third quarter. Atlanta leads 24-7. At Hayden, Skip Carey with you. From the stadium in Atlanta. A couple of years, the Falcons will have a brand new home. The Georgia Dome. About three miles from here. the safeties had disappeared on the play action fake watch number 41 in the back of the screen at the top of the screen he comes right up with a play action fake whoops and Eddie Brown runs right across the field that that is asking too much of Charles Dimery who was beaten by Jerry Rice for four touchdowns a couple of weeks ago to cover Eddie Brown second and ten from the 41 yard line Asiason the throw Dumps it off to Iggy Wood. Breaks one tackle. Tuggle gets him at the 50-yard line. Jesse Tuggle having a big night. John Reedy was involved as well. You know, the play action, I think what makes Cincinnati so effective is not just Boomer Esiason, but it's their offensive linemen. Offensive linemen make it look just like a run. See all the offensive linemen? No one's backing up. Everybody's moving forward. Esiason holds the ball in his hip, and that pulls the safety forward. But the safety's key offensive linemen, not just running backs. Third and one for the Bengals. He's got Woods all along. 40, 35, Man. 30 and out of bounds. <laughs> Brian Jordan will stop. Well, I'll tell you, Roland Mitchell, he hit Roland Mitchell. And Mo Roland Mitchell, believe me, is breathing heavy right now. That Woods is a, he's a load. He sure is. Watch us right at the end of the play. I think he's caught about three passes like that, no more than about two yards of whap. Ooh. Yeah. They mark it at the 28-yard line, a 22-yard pickup, first and 10. From the 28, Brown wide to the right. Greg Taylor checks into the backfield. Football. He crosses the 25, has run out of bounds near the 23-yard line. Robert Lyles ran him up. You know, one of the adjustments the Bengals clearly made at halftime because they were stuck running the football. This drive, they've run the ball better, but it's been Harold Green, it's been big backs. It's been Harold Green and it's been Icky Woods. And they really have changed it. They've run to the left side with Harold Green twice now with some success. You know, uh, they, they make a lot of adjustments and you know, Sam White is just not listening to books on tape over there on his headsets. He, he's listening to somebody up there. Make, they're making some changes. Second and five for Cincinnati. Asiasen will throw again. Dumps it off to his tight end home and breaks the tackle. Inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. Jesse Tuggle in on the stop, along with Mike Gann, the six-year veteran out of Notre Dame. You know, they really haven't used Rodney Holman much tonight, who's having a, just a sensational year for the Bengals at tight end. Just that time, just a little delay route. But what makes Holman so effective, I think, is that they ask him to do virtually everything, and he does that. He can be a dominating blocker, he can get deep, and he can dump off the short ones. We'll be back right after this. Robert Lyles, the injured Falcon, gets off the field under his own power. 24-7 is our score. Atlanta leads midway through the third quarter. Asiasen barks signal on first down. Eddie Brown in motion. Great play action fake. Brooks can't handle it. He would have been out of bounds anyway. Peace, yeah. 
Again, the play action. And they have five different play action formations, five different ways they get to it. And, it, and really, the key is the offensive line. You see Munoz down the line. He had James Brooks really open, just overthrow him. That, that should have been a completion for the first down. So second down is the result from the 17-yard line. But it's been the point counterpoint. They've been, Scott Casey's making a lot of tackles, and now they're working the play action game. Play action again. He's in trouble. He unloads, threw it away. Saved the sack, third down. Well, down by 17, I think they really need to get the ball into the end zone, not just settle for the field goal. I mean, football's a game of momentum. Certainly the Falcons have it after the punt return by, by Sanders. So it's third and 10 here. And, and usually games turn on five or six third down plays. This is one of them for the Bengals. Tim Green and Torrey Epps were those hounding Esiason. Third and 10 from the 17. McGee wide right. Intended for Brown. Case was there. Dimery was there as well. And it's fourth and ten, and they'll have to settle for the field goal. Or the try for the field goal. Yeah, Siasen is just not in rhythm tonight. He is just not in rhythm tonight. Saw him miss Brooks a little bit earlier. This was just a, another poorly thrown ball as Eddie Brown was breaking more outside than toward the end zone. 35-yard field goal try by Jim Breach. Trying to bring his team to within two touchdowns. And he does just that. 24-10 is now the score. The Falcons have the lead. We'll be back after this from your local sponsors. Steve Broussard is the deep man for Atlanta. There's the story. We're in the third period. It's 24-10. The Falcons have the lead, and they'll have the ball. As we go back to play, Bruce uh, will not run it up. He'll down it in the end zone. And the Falcons will start at the 20-yard line. Now let's take a look at tonight's Hyundai leaderboard. Well, Andre Rice and came into tonight's game leading the NFL in receptions with 43. Only caught one pass tonight for five yards. He was a little frustrated earlier in the game. Came in with more yards than anybody. Tied with Jerry Rice for eight touchdown receptions. And he's made a big difference, not so much tonight, but this season offensively for the Falcons. Falcons now would like a nice long drive to chew up some clock. Miller brings him up. First and ten at the 20. Broussard up in there. And on the other hand, we haven't seen that much tonight. You know, four or five white jerseys around a ball carrier. And then, like the Falcons won a long drive, the Bengals to get back in this game. Their defense is going to have to come up with an event of their own. A, a turnover, a sack, a block kick or something. They've only forced one punt tonight. And that's why Atlanta is up 24-10. Tim Krumrai and Natu Tua Tagaloa made the stop. Beautifully said. Thank you. Mike Rozier checks into the Atlanta backfield. Second and ten. They snap it straight to Rozier and he breaks up. 35. He can go. 45. Out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Rod Jones made the stop. 28 yards, first down Atlanta. Yeah, that was a direct snap to him they tried earlier. Remember earlier there was a mix-up and Chris Miller knocked the ball away? It's it just another way of running a draw play. And Mike Rozier, who was really just a, a spot player last week when he came to, uh, came to the Falcons, has been much more than just a role player tonight. He has really kept drives alive for the Falcons. Rozier comes up. Broussard returns. It's red gun time again for Atlanta. Rising in motion. Miller all alone has his man. It's Michael Hayes. And he is hammered down inside. 
Cincinnati territory. David Fulcher made the hit. He's a good one, seven yard pickup. What well, Atlanta is doing is really using Andre Rice in somewhat of a decoy. You'll see him go in motion. Again, it gives Chris Miller a chance to see what kind of defense am I getting, man for man or zone. Then he comes right back to the left side. It really is wide open, but Chris Miller goes back to the other side because he had a wide receiver open over there as well. Second down, three yards to go, 440 left. Sean Collins wide to the left, rising in the slot to that side. Broussard, the running back with Miller. Collins all along, 35, 30-yard line. Fulcher made the stop again. Lewis Phillips in there as well. 15-yard pickup, but Atlanta continues to move virtually at will against Cincinnati. Well, you see these offensive linemen all in the back of the heels. Everybody knows it's going to be a pass or a draw. But what they have done is given Chris Miller some pretty good protection all night long. And linemen love Chris Miller because he gets rid of the ball so quickly. He prevents sacks. He prevents interceptions because he makes up his mind quickly where he's going to throw the ball. And then it gets out of his hand quickly. He's 11 of 14, 104 yards. Miller under center this time. Rising in motion. Broussard. Knocked out of bounds at the 25. Ricky Dixon made the stop, but a sizable gain for Broussard. He's a rookie out of Washington State. They really like him. And when, you, when you tackle Broussard, too, you really tackle him as much on instinct as anything else because he is small at 5'7", and a lot of times you don't see him until he's right on top of you. And then he's a, he's a strong runner, and you just can't arm tackle him. He'll run right through people. And that's why I think he's off to an effective, uh, effective start in his rookie season. Broussard out, Rozier in for Atlanta. 3.15 left at second and five at the 25. There goes Rising again. But Cincinnati simply cannot stop Atlanta. Well, it, yeah, you're right. This is the, the, the Denver Nugget defense again. Second time, the direct snap. Watch the umpire. The, the umpire number 27 really screen off. I think it's Fulcher. <laughs> and Mike Rozier just uses him. He's trying to get out of the way. But Falcons and Ray Sherman, their offensive coordinator. They've had some power running, some passing, and some draws. Rozier, eight carries, 74 yards. First down, 11-yard line. drive by the Atlanta Falcons. They did a little bit of everything. 80 yards in seven plays. It took 443. A lot more dancing going on. Price and Rozier were the main combatants. Greg Davis kicks her through and Atlanta builds its lead to 31 10 with 2.15 remaining in the quarter. We'll be back right after this. Floyd Dixon out of Stephen F. Austin, his first two-touchdown game of his career. Price and Jennings, the deep men, Greg Davis, will kick it off at Atlanta by three touchdowns. this time. Price at the seven. And he is nailed at the 30 yard line. Just about the time it looked like he was going to break free. Ken Tippins came in and leveled it. Yeah, these special teams have been just that for the Falcons this entire year. Five block kicks, guys hustling down on kickoffs, punt returns for touchdowns. 
That was just another example of it as Ken Tippins put the stop on it. That was a major league stop. Yeah, he's still not getting up. There's the Falcon scoring drive. Dixon's second touchdown reception of the night. And here's the touchdown providing play. And, and remember, I think Andre Risen's getting a lot of attention. And he rolled to the right. And right. Dixon's open very early in the pattern, right over the middle. That time it was a zone defense rather than the man-for-man -man found that little free soft spot right over the uh, umpire, number 27, Al Conway again for the touchdown. Interesting stat, Atlanta has possessed the ball 21 minutes, 47 seconds. Cincinnati, 21 minutes and a second. Yet there's a three touchdown difference. From the 30, Esiason has little choice but to throw it out. Swings it out to Icky Woods, nothing there, he loses four yards. Darian Connor, the rookie out of Jackson State, made the stop. He's the youngster who tragically lost his brother in an automobile accident over the summer. He's dedicated the season to his late brother. And they're expecting very big things from him, Darian Connor. They say that about Connor, he can run and he can hit. And if he can do that for Jerry on Jerry Glanville's team, he gets to play a lot. They mark the ball at the 29, so it's second and 11. A minute 24 left in the third period. the stop for the first down and a 15-yard completion. You know, I think the real common denominator against the, the good, the top teams in the NFL are defense and special teams. Tonight, Jerry Glanville's team has played very good defense and superb special teams. You wonder why they lost four games, and I just think it's high to play at the emotional pitch that he asks for 16 weeks. Green and Woods, the running backs for the Bengals. Play action. There's a lot of guys happy for that man right there. Charles Dimery, who has taken an awful lot of grief here in the local press, and after that 49er game when Jerry Rice got the better of him. He's a third-year man out of Nevada, Las Vegas. Second and 10 for the Bengals. 37 seconds left in the period. Atlanta's had it all their own way. Dimery really did a, made a nice play. Really should have picked this ball off quite easily. It was intended for McGee. Second and ten. Pressure. Gets up. Oh, oh, what a hit. Scott Case. It was intended for the tight end, Rodney Holman. Yeah, remember we said receivers here can hear a cat yawn from 50 yards when they go over the middle? Because it's plays like that by number 25, Scott Case. We've seen him up at the line of scrimmage making tackles. This time he just reads the pattern. There's no, he's not even trying to go for the interception there. He's just putting the hit on Rodney Holman. Third down, 10 yards to go. You know, safety's a misnomer for him. He's an assistant linebacker. Cincinnati, four out of 10 on third down conversion. That's complete. Rodney Holman, Jesse Tuggle made the stop. A 13-yard pickup, and it keeps the drive alive as the quarter winds down here. 14 seconds left, as you see. Well, Rodney Holman uses the middle of the field as well as any tight end in football today. Cincinnati will try to squeeze in one more play, and they do, and the Dickey wins. And he breaks the tackle and gets to the 41-yard line. Then Brian Jordan and Scott Case wrap him up as the third quarter comes to a close. At the end of three, the Falcons lead it 31-10. We'll be back right after this. Necessarily of a loser, like they've had the last year. There is a different attitude, certainly by the players, and you can hear it by the fans tonight. Mike Barber checks into the game, and he's wide right. Yeah, you have 
to be happy for. Been picked on all year long and been put in some very untenable positions because of the Blitzy defense. The ball just underthrown. And then well played by Dimmerick. So Atlanta has the ball back and they've got it going their way. They lead by 21. And those guys are out there on an island. You know, you, you see them, but you can't help them. And that time, Charles Dimery made the play. From the 11-yard line, the Falcons are clicking to make. And the Bengals continue their roller coaster ride. As you watch these teams, Skip, I, both of them are hard to figure. You know, you watch the Falcons tonight and you say, hey, how could they have lost four football games? Now, they lost two of them to the 49ers. They're, they're pretty good. And they lost one to a Rams, then another team that's up and down. And really the same with the Bengals, a team that has play, played brilliantly at times and then miserably others. Rozier in, Broussard out. Rozier's had a big neck. Michael Haynes puts wide right. Andre Risen in the slot to that side. This place is rocking and rolling. He wants all of it for Risen. No. Solomon Wilpats broke it up, the safety. And Chris Miller knows if he had thrown it a little bit earlier or farther. Ryzen would have run under this in the slot for in the slot there. And again, he's been running short routes most of the night. This time he goes right down the center. He, he has actually both of them beaten. And if the ball is thrown earlier, he can run under it. And he comes away with a touchdown. Third down, 10 yards to go from the 12 yard line. 13.55 left. In the game, the Falcons by 21. reception. They're short of the first down and Scott Fulhag will come in to punt it away. Well, you, you know, you, you see what makes him a dangerous player. I mean, he can run by you as he did the just a moment the, the play earlier, and then you can throw him a little five-yard play and let him do something with the, with the ball after the catch. This is what, the second Atlanta punt of the night, if I'm not mistaken? Yes. And the Bengals, if they're going to have any chance, need to block it. Kendall Smith is the deep man now. They're going to measure it just to make sure. But they are short of the first down. Atlanta has really protected the ball tonight. You know, every other game this year they've had a turnover, but none tonight. Kendall Smith, the deep man. Clock ticks at 13.35. Smith, the second-year man out of Utah State. He gets it away, a high kick. Smith at the 33, 37-yard line. And that's all she wrote. Tracy Johnson made the hit. And another squabble breaks out here. 46 yard punt, five yard return. Hey, give Dale Hamer and his crew some credit tonight though. Those guys, those referees have done a nice job of keeping the game from getting out of hand. And we'll be back to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium right after this. Are a team in a mess. Loose football. 
Falcons have it, but... You know, the Falcon defense really has done a pretty good job of tonight, Skip, quite honestly. But they've been able to, to, to stuff runs early on, on first down, and then really take away any kind of deep passes, those deep passes they thought they were going to have a chance. See that they were coming in averaging 319 yards a game. Worst in the NFL, and tonight it's... Uh, they really have played remarkably well on defense. And they haven't hurt themselves with penalty. Asiasen has little choice but to throw, and he has a man. It's Barber, complete, and out of bounds. Dimery ran him out. Mike Barber made the reception out of Marshall University. His sixth catch of the year and a 12-yard advance. Well, you, you, there are six guys, six black jerseys, that are seven of them, actually, that are not going to be beaten deep at this stage in the game. It's not Jerry Glanville's style. They like to attack, but they're smart enough leading 31-10. They're not going to give up a cheap one. 12-15 left in our game. 31-10 Atlanta is the score. Asiasen. He's got a long time. He'll run. And he'll get out of bounds. Robert Lyles chased him out. A Falcon is down on the deck back at the 47-yard line. Tim Green is hurting. Well, when you have seven or eight guys dropping in coverage, clearly you don't have enough to ru rush the passer. But he's got absolutely nowhere to go. And the, the nice thing here by the Falcon defense, nobody comes up to try to cover uh, Boomer and give him a cheap score. Give him the 8, 9, 10 yards, but no, don't let anybody behind you. Green makes it to his feet. And as he comes off, let's look at some of the other scores. The Lions, a big win. The Vikings problems continue. The Eagles got a last second score to beat the Cowboys. The Patriots problems continue to grow. The Jets upset the Oilers. The Giants win again. Bears a winner, and the Dolphins had little trouble with the Colts. Browns a great effort, but they came up short, and the Chargers really hammered Tampa Bay. No sacks in this game, by the way, on either side. Straight ahead, Icky Woods piles his way down to about the 38, maybe the 37-yard line. The clock continues to roll with 11.35 left in the game. Mike Gann made the stop. Jumped down off that billboard and made the tank. It's enough for a first down. Well, the, the, the real advantage that the Bengals had, they thought they had, was that they could suck the defensive backs up with play action and get behind it. But at this stage of the game, they can't. So anything they get, they're clearly going to have to earn. No, no easy ones. Messiah's uh, overthrew. It was intended for his tight end, Rodney Holman, but he overthrew it. By the way, next week, the Falcons journey to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Cincinnati finally gets home, and they host New Orleans. Tim Green has returned to the Atlanta lineup, so whatever his problem was, didn't take it long to get fixed. These guys will look forward to get home. Six of the final eight for the Bengals will be played at Riverfront Stadium. Asias in 13 out of 28 on the night. 135 yards. And there may be the first sack. He got it away though and it's complete. There was a flag on the play. Tim Green was all over Asiasen. Pass complete to Woods. Holding. Holding Cincinnati. Bruce Kazerski on a holy cross, the hole. But really, we were just talking about no sacks on either team. The quarterbacks haven't had a lot of pressure on them, and when they've had, they've been able to get rid of the football. And yeah, that was the hold on uh, on Tim Green, the man who limped off earlier with the injury, came right back in. Now that was the thing that. Jerry Glanville was saying about Tim Green, he pleads with his heart. One of those kinds of guys, you know, 110% type of guy. I had to laugh at him yesterday talking about Dick McPherson, his college coach, yeah. talking about how emotional his coach was on the field. What about Tim? He's a wild man. Yeah. Asiasen 
Down the middle, Eddie Brown. Took a big hit, but he held on. Deion Sanders nailed it, a 27-yard pickup. Well, that, that's, that's a terrific catch by Eddie Brown because he, you, you just know you're going to get nailed because this ball's in the air a long time. You know, the Boomer adjusts his throw to throw it around the outstretched arms. It was a nice touch by Boomer. Another Falcon on the deck Man. at the 40-yard line. Well, was that a nice catch? Marcus Cotton is the injured player. Well, you mentioned Andre Bruce earlier in the game. and Marcus Cotton, both drafted a couple of years ago, expecting big things out of both of them, and really have been relegated to, to role players, pass rushers. There's Bruce, number 93, on the Atlanta bench. Now we'll be back, and we'll be back after this, which comes, of course, from your local sponsor. You got it. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Atlanta Falcons and the NFL is prohibited. First and ten for the Bengals. From the 20 yard line. Hickey Woods, the lone setback. Brooks flank wide right. Dumps it off. Woods at the 15. Woods to the 10 to the 8 yard line. Well, the good news for the Bengals, it looks like Hickey Woods is back. He certainly has been back as a receiver tonight. I think he's caught like five passes, five of those little short dump passes. A gain of 12 and a first of goal is the result. Well, that's sometimes stats lie and it's one right there. Turnovers have been a big part of this game. First and goal from the eight yard line with nine and a half minutes. Sweet Woods. Oh man. Hammer. Darian Connor, the youngster, and Jesse Tuggle, a couple of linebackers, put the hit on. Connor had the real good shot. Yeah, they, they said he, he keeps his feet on the ground and he can deliver a blow. Number 56, 58 is Tuggle, who gets the first shot. Yeah, it was really Tuggle who pulled him, wrapped him up around the neck. Mm. Less than nine minutes left in the game. Esiason with an audible. Into the flat. Brian Jordan made the hit again. James Brooks received the pass, but got very little out of it. Yeah, what a night Brian Jordan has had. There's a guy in his second year, number 40, who, who came from nowhere to start this season. You know, did, nobody really heard of him much two years ago and came in, and he has made a tremendous difference on this defense. Mike Barber splits wide to the right. It's third and goal from the four. with a chance to move to within two touchdowns. Jim Breach on to try the extra point. Now we see both teams use motion very effectively tonight, not just as decoys, but really to accomplish something. There Eddie Brown lined up in the backfield, went in motion from right to left, and then just outran the defender who was trying to run from behind to catch him. But a lot of teams just use motion, motion for decoys, but not these teams. Jim Breach will try to add the point, and he does, and it's a two-touchdown game, 31-17. Ten plays, 63 yards, 5-11 off the clock. We'll be back right after this. There's the story of the game. The Falcons are alive for the onside kick here. Eight minutes left, a two-touchdown difference. Broussard is the lone deep man, and he's back there all by himself. Everybody else up close to the line of scrimmage for a minute. Let's see how the Bengals play it. He pooched it. Broussard comes over, comes up with it at the 10, and runs it out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Flags on the play. 
So the left end was offside there for the Bengals. And Broussard apparently knew it because he just very calmly stepped out of bounds. That, that was kind of a clever, yeah, there it is. Clever little onside because if Broussard doesn't get the, the, the good bounce there, maybe you have a couple of bodies scrambling around for it. Offside, number 83 of the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. The penalty is accepted and they'll re-kick. Interestingly enough, Pat, you know, where you can make statistics indicate anything. If you just tuned into this game and the first thing you heard was the number of plays run, Cincinnati 58, Atlanta 38, you would think certainly the Bengals led. That is not the case. Well, but it's really been... Yeah, the total plays it's really been two plays I think that have turned the tenor of this game around one was right before halftime as the Bengals were trying to run it out and James Brooks fumbled Atlanta Scott Case Scott Case recovered it and they went into score right before halftime that was one of the two big plays and the other was the punt return by Deion, Sa Deion Sanders and rather that has really been the difference as this game is now what a 14 point game Broussard again is the deep man as you look at Sander Scott Case back at about the 37 yard line as well this one will bounce around for a bit Case comes up with it and returns it oh, oh, the football. but a whistle sounds I think it was out of bounds before he lost it I tell you, I think the Falcons are lucky that they have it's a, it's got a nice bounce. It's an oblong ball that really bounced right up to Scott Case. Tony Rampa, please, reporting it. And he stepped out before he fumbled. So good field position for Atlanta. Sean Collins jumped on the loose football, but it wouldn't have counted anyway. You know, Atlanta just can't try to run this thing out, I don't think. I mean, they've, they've gotten this lead by being aggressive offensively, using the red gun formation, throwing the football, running with some power. I've seen a lot of teams go into a shell of a situation like this and lose in the fourth quarter. They lead by two touchdowns with 7.45 left. Do the Falcons. The game is to the up back. That's Keith Jones out of Illinois. He powers his way. Up close to the 45-yard line, a pickup of six at second and four. Kevin Walker, the linebacker, on the stop for Cincinnati. Bengals just flat out have not been able to stop Atlanta tonight. Yeah, you know, the offensive line for the Atlanta Falcons really have done a pretty good job tonight. Freilich and Hinton and Dukes and Hoover and Ken on the left side. Those guys have protected Chris Miller, really hasn't had a lot of heat on him, and they've opened up some nice holes for Rozier and Broussard. Another guy deserves some credit here is Ken Herrick. Well, the trade bringing Hinton and Ryzen and a number one next year yeah. for the rights to Jeff George has really set Atlanta up. Jones again, he gets cracked, but he powers his way to midfield. Keith Jones, 210 pounds, second year man out of Illinois. See? Good for the first down. They move the chains, keep the clock rolling. You know your offensive line is doing a job when the entire defense knows you're going to run the ball and you still pick up first downs. I mean, that, that's, that's what offensive linemen love. You know, just, just like quarterbacks and receivers getting rhythms, I think linemen do as well. 6.25 left in the game. Atlanta in no hurry, of course. 31-17 is our score. Sean Collins comes wide to the right. Jones and Broussard, the setback. Broussard, he's got five, ten. He's got a touchdown. the chance earlier in the year they called him Franco because he was always running out of bounds kidding around with him no running out of bounds this time for Steve Broussard Kevin Walker had a clean shot at him 
but he bounced off and went 50 yards for a touchdown. Previous longest run from scrimmage for Atlanta was 24 yards. That's good, and Atlanta continues to roll, and a capacity crowd is going gaga here as the Falcons run up a 38-17 lead with exactly six minutes left in this game. Let's look at the touchdown run from Bruce Hart one more time. Again, first look at the surge by the offensive line. The right side hit and Fralick just blow their people off. Xander can't keep on them. Then he runs to the tackle of Solomon Wilcox, I believe it was. And no Franco Harris here didn't run out of bounds, ran right down the sideline, showed power early, the, the early part of the run, and then the speed later to outrun two defenders. I'll tell you what, this Bengal team, it's like a they can't wait roller, to get home. Yeah. Roller coaster ride. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's interesting, it's not just this season. The last four years they've been Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In 86, they were 10 and 4. Then they dropped the 4 and 11 in 87. Went back to 12 and 4 in 88 in the Super Bowl. And then 8 and 8 a year ago. So it's not just been this season. Well, it's only an hour and 10 minute flight home for the Bengals, Ooh. but it's going to seem a lot longer after this game. Kickoffs, all 11 jerseys go down to the end zone. Every kick. Look at. There's another Heimlich maneuver by Dale. Stanford Jennings being restrained by our referee Dale Hammer. Dale has, really has done a nice job under some difficult circumstances. Well, we talked about. For those of you who are NBA aficionados, this may not seem like such a big <laughs> deal, but in football, it is. <laughs> This five-game road trip, that's 2,250 miles to Seattle. They stayed there a week, then flew 1,000 miles down to Anaheim, then down to Houston, then up to Cleveland, now back down to Atlanta. It's like the Big Dipper there. Did it? Esaias it off to Icky Woods, and he is downed at the 28th. Bobby Butler in the game, the veteran out of Florida State, made the stop. The clock ticks with 5.35 left. Many of the fans here head for home. Flags fly. Again, Woods. 36-yard line, but check the penalty. Jesse Tuggle made the stop. Jerry Glanville, a happy man tonight. Offside, number 93 of the defense. Penalties declined. First down. Offside against Atlanta, against Audrey Bruce. The penalty is declined. First down, Cincinnati with 5.15 left in the game. to be a huge game for Charles Dimery. The whole nine, they, they tried him a couple of times, but he's pretty much answered the call. Had the interception, had Eddie Brown covered there pretty well on that play. You know, he'll, he'll be tested and continue to be tested this year, but his confidence is not shot. As a matter of fact, it, it's had a great boost in the arm tonight. Jesse Tuggle, 12 tackles today. One deflected pass, one fumble force, one assisted tackle. Brooks breaks it for five up to the 40-yard line. Marcus Cotton made the stop. And only a semi-fight after that play. Yeah. 4.50 remaining in the game. A big win for the Falcons. They'll go to three and four. Cincinnati to five and three. I was talking to Scott Case a couple of days ago and 
he was saying, hey, yeah, we've lost four games, but if you look, if you look what's happening in the NFC, you know, we still have to play a lot better the second half of the season. We still have a shot. We don't think we're out of it. And, you know, you, then you come out and you watch him play tonight and you understand why it's the same one. Passiason is sacked. First of the night. Loose football as well. Roland Mitchell. Andre Bruce calls the turnover. Mitchell the recovery. Fourth turnover, Atlanta doesn't have any. Well, Andre Bruce, the number one draft pick in the 1988 draft, the entire draft number one pick, is now just a pass rushing specialist. But there he did a wonderful job of getting around this man, causing the turnover. And then it was Roland Mitchell, the nickelback, who made the recovery. There's the story of the game to my way of thinking, those turnovers. But you got to give Atlanta all the credit in the world. That played a heck of a game. Yeah, you know, defensively, special teams, offense, everybody's contributed. And they haven't hurt themselves with silly penalty. They keep it on the ground. Mike Rozier gets the carry. He's pushed back. You know, one of the criticisms of Glanville is that, you know, you can't play at this high emotional peak for 16 weeks, but I think the more you win, and the more confidence you get that you can win, I don't think you have to play on high emotion. You, you play on confidence, and it's going to take a while. You'll go from spoilers this year to, to maybe uh, factors next season. A dejected Boomer Esiason on the sideline. Atlanta has dominated the game. They lead it 38-17. Chris Miller has had some night. He's got great help from his running game. Tracy Johnson in the game. Rozier, nothing there. He's knocked down by reserve safety Barney Bussey. Clock will be under three minutes before another play is run. Three minutes left in our game. Don't forget, next week we'll be in the Metrodome. We'll wrap it up for TNT with the Broncos and the Vikings. Well, that's a grim yeah. story up in Minneapolis, isn't it? Yeah, but if we looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year, I thought this was going to be a, a terrific uh, game matchup at least, yeah. The Vikings go into the tank, and the Broncos have had their share of problems. Tracy Johnson, the long setback with Miller. It's third and 11. I thought he was interfered with. No call is forthcoming. And Greg Davis will get the call here. It will be a 52-yard field goal. No, no, I was wrong. That was a nice play by Ricky Dixon. He got there right when the ball did. Good defensive play by Dixon. He already has a 51-yarder does Greg Davis this year. He'll try for 52. That is not going to make it. It is short. The ball goes back to the Bengals with 2.23 remaining in the game. When we talk about the Bengals being inconsistent, this road trip has been very much like that. They'll end up with three losses and the two wins, but it's been the points scored that really... Uh, Leave it all over the place. Eric Wilhelm checks in at quarterback for the Bengals. He'll finish it up. Wilhelm, out of Oregon State, a second-year man. I was talking to Dana, Dana Bible, the quarterback coach, and said, who said, said to me this week, Eric Wilhelm will be a very successful NFL quarterback before his career is out. We think this guy has a bright future. He's back to throw. Well, 216 left. Only in his second year. It comes out of Oregon State, as you said. But in his senior season in the Pac-10, there were a lot of good quarterbacks out there. Troy Aikman was at UCLA. Tim Rosenball was at Washington State. Rodney P. was at Southern Cal. But he led 
the Pac-10 in passing that year at Oregon State. Esiason finishes the night, 19 of 35, 199 yards. Two more interceptions, one touchdown. Wilhelm will run it, and he's knocked down at the 49-yard line by Andre Bruce. Bruce, a third-year man out of Auburn. Well, Sam Weiss said last night what he wanted to do was get out of this game without Boomer Esiason being injured, and at least he'll have that. And that's all. We are at the two-minute warning. We will return. Stay with us, please. Thank you. I think it is telecast of NBA action on TNT, and then, of course, the playoffs following that. You've been doing football, what, uh, 25, I mean, basketball 25 years or so? Who yes. Do you, who do you like? What do you uh, see this year? I think Phoenix has a chance. I really like Detroit, though. They're a good team. If Dennis Rodman comes back to help it's Charles Dimery, four tackles on the night, five passes defended, one interception, and remember, this is the guy who's had six intercept, uh, six touchdowns thrown on him the last two games, so he has responded well tonight. Second and six for the Bengals. Will help the throw. He's got pressure. He unloads. He's got a man. It's complete. It's Barber out of bounds. Mike Bar Barber, a second-year man out of Marshall. There's Scott Case on the hit again. Here's Wilhelm. Well, you know, your backup quarterbacks don't get a chance to get hit too much. You know, actually, once in a while, you like that. You like the feeling that you played the game. You got your uniform dirty, you know. You're earning the paycheck. You like that? Yeah, you know. You don't want to stand around there carrying the clipboard too long. James Brooks with the ball. Nothing there. Nothing there. Brian Jordan among those on the stop. Another shoving mess. Stanford Jennings and Andre Bruce get into it. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, the officials have come under a lot of fire lately. You made a good point earlier. These guys have done a terrific job in a volatile situation all night long. Yeah, like we said, it was interesting that, that, that Sam Weish and Boomer Siason, who spent a lot of time thinking about these officials, really had a lot of respect for Dale Hamer. Only six penalties all night, but a zillion Shove the shoving matches. Yeah. Yeah. One thirty remaining in the game, as you see. Stanford Jennings is the lone setback behind Eric Wilhelm. No flags. It was intended for Brooks. Bobby Butler broke it up. Butler, a 10-year man out of Florida State. Well, I'm looking forward to Halloween. I'll be going out as a foot ornament <laughs> with my children. And on, rightfully so. <laughs> on Wednesday night. Josh, my son's going to be a ghost. Is that right? Yeah. He is quite some nose tackle, I understand. So far, so good. He's got that nose tackle personality, too. Will help. <laughs> That's a bad adapt. Might have been Andre Bruce who's yeah, playing well here. This is just his niche. Yeah. The only suspense left of the game. What will happen afterwards when the game is over? Will Sam Weish and Jerry Glanville walk across the field and shake one another's hand? I'll bet you a nickel they don't. Oh, I don't want to take that bet. 113 left. This is a fourth down play. And they got a long way to go. Wilhelm runs for his life. Gets the pass away, complete, but short of the first down. Kendall Smith made the reception. And this is one of those games where you don't even want to watch the films the next day. I mean, the Bengals may go home and and they'll have their meeting tomorrow, but they may not even watch this film. They just might take the afternoon off and start getting ready for the next game. Scott Campbell comes in to quarterback the Atlanta team for the final minute and three seconds. Campbell, a fifth-year man out of Purdue, 13 out of 25 on the year. Big night for Chris Miller and for the entire Atlanta team. This is a very yeah. impressive win for them. Yeah, it really has. 
locked in. Scott Gamble played at Purdue a, a year or two, I think, ahead of Jim Everett there. Broussard comes wide right. Miller ends the night. 13 out of 18, 124 yards and two touchdowns. Flags fly with one minute left. And, and again, no interceptions for Chris Miller. In his fourth year, I think, really developing into a special player. You know, really hasn't thrown any interceptions uh, or many interceptions Run from his two, rookie season five on. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Illegal procedure against Atlanta, so first down will be repeated. Smart player, knows where he's going to go with the ball very quickly. And that's why, again, his offensive linemen like him because he gets rid of the ball quickly and they don't look so bad, you know. He's a heck of a golfer and a big Braves fan, bless his heart. Well, he, he had a long season there, didn't he? They're bearing out what you said about his tendency to not throw interceptions. Now the clock will tick for a while, and this game is all but over. Don't forget the stadium show post game coming up next. Fred Hickman, uh, Kevin Kiley, and Kenny Stabler, and Ernie Johnson. Okay. Craig Sager. Well, he deserves a good laugh. You know, a lot of guys take this game very seriously. And he's serious about his preparation, but he's not afraid to have a good laugh. Say what you will about the man. Some people say he's a colorful presence. Some say he's a creation of his own hype. But I'll tell you what he's done. He's gotten the fannies in the seats here in Atlanta. Yeah. He's out drag racing yesterday. Yeah, and he's got his own newspaper column. He's got about 10 different radio shows, his own television show. He's a one-man conglomerate. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, this one is over. Well, he's not going to shake hands, except with some fans. 38-17 is the final score.